Nevada. It's supposedly a ghost town. Kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's a beautiful location in the middle of nowhere. Just south of the White Mountains, probably 250 miles from Idaho border. The first time I drove up here, um, I just was still so shocked at how tiny it was. But as soon as you actually get into town and you get into like the ceramics area and you walk past the throwing dome and all that stuff, it just kind of makes sense. A lot of stuff really clicks. Um, there's a lot of little details that you always miss. And every time I'm coming here, you always see extra things that I always miss from the year before. So I got invited by Rose and I considered it a special little trip for like the last seniors do raw and so I was like okay that sounds like fun so I came because I really just love being able to do this kind of stuff. My favorite part of pottery is that you get to be so creative really there's no assignments that you have to do it's all within the pottery. Oh, wait. Words, even the entire I don't know One of my favorite parts of being at Tuscarora is because just you get to kind of get messy and you don't really need to control yourself over that. I've never really used a wheel, so this is kind of the first time that I've done it with Jerry and the first time that I've done it alone. Why do you use a wheel? We are kind of also using these for examples for the high school students so that they don't have to like test out their own yet yeah, perfect like, guess. I know the history of this place so uh, it was a huge silver town. It was like bigger than Las Vegas or something. But um, then what happened is gold kicked in in California, silver started becoming more hard to find. And then you know everyone left. But I mean other than that it's kind of like um, an in-between forgotten place because you know, just no one knows about it. So. When you're an old person like me, uh, or the other teachers, right, we remember a world before the world was always with you. Like, when you've got a phone with you, um, your obligations are always there. Your distractions are always there. It's like you're in competition with the rest of the world. Um, and here, um, seeing kids like, slow down and focus, and then seeing them rewarded with these great colors and these great sculptures. It, uh, I actually was just talking to a student in the dome. I, I try not to go in there because I really want this to be about their creativity. Um, not about me teaching them structurally. I just love this trip. It's kind of hard to explain because it's kind of get away from home. And like, you don't really have to go to bed at a certain time. And, I, and I'm kind of really thankful that my dad is able to do this because it just makes everybody who comes on this trip super happy. So. Pottery. I had it explained to me once that we're kind of made up of that stuff. We're working with material that is organic in nature, and we are, and it's almost like we're shaping ourselves, and yet, you know, it just starts like this. That's where it starts. You know, it starts that way, and it turns into art. Oh, it's nice. See that flash? So, so like this copper right here caught a little bit of oxygen right here compared to here. I've been doing ceramics for the last eight months, just since last fall. And I've been attacking it furiously as an artist. I've been eyeing a lot of work online from people who've been doing burnished porcelain sagar. What do you expect from it? Honestly, it could go totally horribly. <laughs> it could just be it could just be awful. There's a parallel process of what goes on in, in the raccoon to what goes on with kids. Uh, the term is called reduction where you take pots that are covered in a copper glaze and you reduce the oxygen that gets to that copper. And to do this, you take the pots out and you put them in a bucket and you cover the bucket and then that magic happens out of sight. You don't get to watch it happen. 
and then when you open the bucket later, transformation, right? And that's what happens to kids. When you bring them out of the city, and you reduce the distractions, and you reduce uh, the, the demands of the world that they live in. And then for two and a half days, it's like they go into the bucket. And they don't see it, but there's this cool little transformation that happens to the kids. And then they come away a little different. And so my hope is that as they go back to their busy lives, they take a little piece of this place and this experience with them and they remember what that felt like. And then wherever they are, they seek that out in their lives. Um, they find their own little test drawer somewhere. You know, getting away from all of the fuss of town and just being here and being creative or just being at peace. Um, I think it's really important that they understand that there's more to what I'm able to teach them. There's always more to learn. It's really amazing when you just like look around and there's just, you just see the mountains surrounded and you kind of just feel like you're like in a little aquarium. Once you try it and you taste it once, you want to do this again. Whether it's literally come here or cut out a piece of your world and set it aside and leave it for focus and for you time and for creativity time. If you want to come out and work hard for three days and get a, do a lot of really cool things and get introduced to a lot of really interesting different forms and firing techniques, you should come here. It's really beautiful out here.